yeah, I'm gonna talk about this guy. After so long, I think it's necessary to do so. I've been seeing too much happen and too many people buy into what he says for me to stay silent for the entire thing. For anyone unaware, this is the cartoon reviewer Cosmodor. He used to be big in the animation community, and some of his videos broke into the millions. Most of what he talked about consisted of children's cartoons and animated movies. The work he made was well respected, and he had many friends in the community as well. I even encountered him myself in the early days of my YouTube stardom, but I barely interacted with him, so I couldn't gauge his personality. From when I did speak with him, the guy came off friendly enough while we were talking in a group chat, but later I found out his true colors. At the time, there was a little known secret about Cosmo that few were given any info about, especially by him. You see, starting in February and ending in June of 2019, Cosmodor, as a 19 going on 20 year old German man, started dating a 15 year old American girl. All while this was happening, I was actually friends with the victim. However, I didn't find out until November in 2019, in which case I found out not only Cosmo, but the victim themselves wanted to keep the relationship a secret to try and move past it. If I knew what Cosmo did, then I wouldn't have worked with him in a video with Spockter, but no one at the time knew. Talking with the victim, I respected their wishes and didn't make a video at the time, but as Cosmo came back, they gave me permission so I could cover it. And now, most of you watching this may know the victim decided to give their story and evidence to Daft Pina for his video, and they made a video themselves going into their experiences, both of which I'll link in the description. Cosmo had been intentionally vague in his involvement with the victim beforehand, giving contradicting and in some cases false info to look better. In his original confession tweet back in December of 2019, he stated that he had never seen the face of the individual whilst they dated. A bold-faced lie, as the person involved had screenshots showing otherwise. He also came in and out of knowing their age at the time, and in in his most recent video I'm going to be talking about, he claims he didn't know their age to begin with, but anyone who knows the individual understands they never acted older than they were. The person would make jokes about farting and other 12 year old level humor. Their art and videos were very childish and carried interest children at the time would have. Even listening to their voice is enough to tell you this person is underage. Okay, anyone watching, listen to my voice. Can you guess my age based on how I sound? Place an age you'd guess just by hearing me. Thirteen? Ten? Nine? Maybe I sound more like a little boy now, but you get my point as my cadence and pitch is very similar to that of a young child. And this is especially the case like a year ago, and years ago when I made videos. The fact Cosmo would at any point try to feign ignorance is laughable at best and sad at worst. After this initial response and some YouTube stories expressing guilt over how he knew this would come back to him no matter how he tried to hide it, he decided to make a full video about the subject called A Proper Response. In this video, he tries to romanticize the relationship between him and the victim, saying they were unlike anyone he'd known with talents he knew would get them far. He even states within that he still cares for the victim heavily, which is just a disgusting thing to state, honestly, but he also acknowledges just how wrong it was. I think now is probably the best time to get into details on how this quote, relationship worked and everything Cosmo did to the other person involved. Let it be known that both sides have corroborated this is what happened, though they said it in different ways. Cosmodor originally wanted to get with this person before he even met them, and as they started talking, he would go around to various friends of the victim to constantly ask if they were interested. He even got the victim's friends to say it would be a good idea before they eventually started dating. He manipulated the entire situation to get with the obviously underage person via their friends, and during their relationship, he would constantly do things to try and get them to take notice. Starting on a professional level, the victim was once his channel artist, as were they mine, and they expressed wanting to draw the character in their own universe, which he was fine with until they added a tail to the design, in which case he made them take it down. He was also particular with proportions despite the artist having an inconsistent style, and when they upcharged their art, he raged about it. On occasion, Cosmo would sometimes go days without contacting the person to see what their reaction would be. Be. He'd be distant with them and play to their sympathetic side by saying how alone they were and the victim couldn't help or understand, making them feel helpless. In many instances, Cosmo sent Rule 34, or as it should be addressed, pornography to the individual as jokes, and at one point even asked for their tolerance level considering how much graphic imagery he was sending them. It's not brought up much, but he also sent Lolly and Shota to the person as they've shown in censored screenshots, and needless to say, if you know what that is, him sending it is actually breaking the law even 
in Germany. He coerced the victim into showing their face to him multiple times, and they planned to meet up at Momocon 2019 before he didn't. At the time, he claimed it was because of buying a new PC, but he later went back on that and said it was because he just chickened out. Either way, he said he still wanted to meet at another date. All of this is being stated to show just how messed up the relationship really was when burned down to the bare essentials. He abused the victim emotionally by making her constantly worry for him after not speaking for multiple days, would make harsh critiques of their art and undercharge them, sent them many drawn pornographic images as a 19-year-old adult, got the victim's friends in on the whole thing without knowing all the details, and with his massive platform after they broke up, there'd always be a weight placed on the victim to stay quiet for fear of being ruined by someone with a much larger following who also worked with them. The victim has clearly been heavily emotionally affected by this, and their self-deprecating and paranoia have gone through the roof and left long emotional scars. Now imagine all of this happening to a high schooler. Imagine that you are a child trying to do some freelance work on the side, and you end up getting in this kind of relationship with someone so much older than you who has left such emotional scars on you that make you have major trust issues to this day. Even if you would like to claim it isn't grooming despite the clear signs, such as him saying he thought everything would work out once the victim became of age, it's still disgusting, terrible, and illegal. What I mean by that is the age of consent in Germany is 14, but the victim lives in America, where the age of consent in their state is 16, and he intended to meet them in the US for Momocon and do who knows what to them if he made it, which would also be illegal. Even by German standards, when he sent all the porn he did, he was breaking a German law in regards to that kind of thing. In regards to hardcore material, which basically falls under any of the regular stuff you could think of, having an adult show or give such material to an individual under the age of 18 is a crime just like it is in America. So no matter how you look at it, he committed a crime multiple times. There is no way to defend him as having not done anything wrong, even if you want to try and bring up cultural differences. With all of that said, you may be wondering why I'd like to bring it all up. Well, that's because Cosmo, despite all he's done and admitted to, has not gone away. For whatever reason, Cosmo has gotten it in his head that it's a cowardly move to run away from YouTube instead of staying to make videos, and he's progressively been trying to regain his following little by little with videos. Every few months, he brings up the trauma he induced once again in a self-pitying, manipulative fashion because, of course, people aren't going to allow him to live it down if he plans to stay on the internet. Every time he says that he's been getting better, going to therapy, that he's apologized and wants to move on, etc. But he keeps coming back with more and more videos addressing everything. One time, when he tried to come back with a video about Welcome to the NHK, he had a whole message about how he lived in a different country with different consent laws, that'll spiel. And the video got such poor reception, he took it down and re-uploaded it weeks later with the message in the beginning removed. Recently, he's tried to come back again, and just a few days ago, he made another full-blown video called Defending Myself. I randomly noticed it the day of release and noticed an exorbitant amount of likes to dislikes, just as his first video apology originally did. And having fully watched the video, infuriating is too subtle of a word to describe how I feel about that. The amount of manipulation, backwards reasoning, contradicting, and so on made me so angry when I decided to stream watching it with Nani that my inspiration for a video was sparked and I got to work gathering notes from various videos. The rest of this video is going to be a deconstruction on how he's tried to manipulate people into accepting him via this response, and I know Cosmo is most likely watching this video right now, so I just want to say this. I know you have a tendency to leave comments under videos talking about you wanting to talk or whatever, but I'm not sure what else you could tell me when all of this is public and you've been so open. If you're withholding any information just for private interviews, what was the point of your what is it, the third, fourth confession you've made now? Considering the video I'm about to talk about, it feels like you'd just be going on a PR apology tour rather than owning up to your mistakes. Now, let's talk about the video. Considering the entire video is mostly Cosmo reiterating defensive points he's already been using to try and weasel his way back on the platform for a long time, I'm just going to put the points into sections and then go from there, starting with his reasoning for why he created the video. Apparently, it's because he wants to set things straight and move on because it's getting to him. He's also also tired of the rumors being spread around about him by credible sources like random guy with GTA background footage and prison made Luke, who got minor details wrong. Already you can tell he isn't making the video for the victim's sake, as were none of his videos. He stated in the video that his victim has no reason to and doesn't want to forgive him but instead wants to never have any contact with him again. Even hearing Cosmo's voice or looking at the avatar they created can give panic attacks or cause them to get super depressed from their memories. And he should know this by now. It's obvious the video isn't made with 
with the intention of helping anyone other than himself and his rightfully shattered reputation. With all the might he has left, Cosmo wants to try and reach up from the depths using an intentionally vague video to get those that don't know about the situation to come to his side. Reminder, a majority of his audience is most likely kids. He may use YouTube analytics to say his fan base consists mostly of adults, but it's so easy to fake your age on YouTube that it's laughable, and as a cartoon reviewer with his presentation, it's clear where his audience lies. And he knows this. Like he took advantage of his victim with his superior brain development, he's using the same kind of tactic to get kiddies to simp for him in his content they've missed so much. He tries to say in the video he's not trying to defend himself from what happened, but that's exactly what's happening. Just because you say one thing doesn't mean the other isn't occurring. So what? He admitted to being an asshole to his victim? Yeah, that's not downplaying it at all. He's just an asshole that's stalked, verbally and emotionally abused, sent porn to, and generally was quite manipulative to, because that's the definition of being an asshole. Let's not mince words here. I swear, the fact that he's continuing to make videos at all after everything that's happened truly does show you just how disingenuous and dangerous all his apologies really are. Throughout the video, you can hear the smugness in his voice, thinking he's gotten away with the shit he's done, and no one can take him down because the platform he had that was used to keep the victim quiet wasn't taken away from him. Think about it, if Cosmodor was sorry for everything he did, knowing how his very presence has scarred his victim, friends, and anyone else involved, why would he continue to try and come back? Why would he be so shameless and act like he'd gotten all the punishment he deserved and now he can just move on from it and keep creating videos? If he were truly sorry for how he used his platform on someone and has the ability to still do so in his current position, why wouldn't he leave? It's because he likes money. He likes making videos and doesn't want to accept that he isn't wanted. He either doesn't see the trauma he caused as nearly as big a deal as it truly is or wants to make his audience believe he basically did nothing wrong besides being an ass to an ex-girlfriend. Cosmo informs the audience that he's going to therapy and his therapist told him to keep making videos, in which case I have to say either his therapist is just bad or he didn't tell the whole story or situation to that therapist. Or maybe there's no therapist at all. For all any of us know, a good therapist would recognize that after what he's done with his platform, he should not try and get back on with hopes of improving his mental health. The guy himself admitted that he was being negatively affected by the comments he read and started deleting, so why would a therapist recommend he get back on making stuff, particularly on his main channel with over 200,000 subscribers? A good therapist would tell Cosmo to get a new hobby entirely, one off the internet where this kind of situation can't happen again. Him coming back actively shows that he hasn't learned from the whole experience and instead just wants the audience to forgive him since the victim refuses, who by the way has been incredibly negatively affected with each subsequent release of a new video, getting panic attacks because of it. I'm not one for deplatforming just because of a different opinion, but when the platform is deliberately used against another person and could theoretically be used again against another possible victim wanting to come out, that's when I think it should be revoked. Noting of course in the comments and on his Twitter page, we'll talk about more later, he openly invites people to DM him. Cosmo could live a good, happy life off the internet or just not as a public figure if he so chose, but he doesn't, and that's because he still wants to have a career after all this, and live the dream he completely messed up on by doing what he did to the victim. There are hundreds upon thousands of great creators that put in tons of work for what they do without being emotionally and verbally manipulative scoundrels, so instead of trying to let this guy who had admitted to being an abuser back on the platform, we can focus on helping people that deserve to get a chance. I mean, instead of watching a video about a guy who reviewed 10 seasons of The Simpsons, why not watch a video about someone who reviewed all of the seasons? No one wants him to come back other than the fans that don't know the full situation because Cosmo left out information to try and get them on his side unwittingly. So with these videos, he tries to exploit that trust and act like he's just cutting through smaller rumors to say one more thing in that regard. Just because they got something wrong does not put Cosmo in the right by any standard. It's just a tactic he's using to try and shift focus away from his own actions. Speaking of which, the way he tries to downplay everything is both idiotic and disgusting to say the least. The main point of this video isn't just to make fun of Cosmo. I'm doing this because I want to make it harder for another victim to possibly get into Cosmo's grasp, no matter what he may say, and one of the main factors for allowing this to happen is lack of knowledge, specifically what he doesn't want you to know. If you were a fan of Cosmo before this video, that's fine, and I don't blame you for being misled. I was a fan at one point myself, but he is obviously trying to get anyone willing to listen on his side by excluding 
including facts using terms that sound less bad and directly contradicting things he said in the past. For example, his main argument for why he did not groom the person in question is by using the legal argument. Basically, the age of consent in Germany is 14 and Cosmo grew up with other people who had similar age gaps. So he saw the entire thing as consensual from his perspective, but there are many flaws in that statement. For one, he said in his last apology that he did not agree that the age of consent should be 14, meaning that he knows it is not an acceptable thing. Now for context, the age of consent where I live is 14. I brought this up before in a now deleted video and I said before that this is something I disagree with, but it is true. Legality is a fickle thing, because while it may keep you from going to prison, the moral standpoint is much different. In many countries, the age of consent is 11, but I think most would be hard pressed to find a single rational person from a first world country that agrees with that. Cosmo has even stated in the past that he tried to keep it a secret because he knew American sensibilities were different, and in text he mentioned how some would think it was creepy. In reality, the whole argument of cultural differences has been devalued thanks to the evolving internet. Cosmo understood that many Many people found it wrong, and he may say that it's a normal thing in Germany, but he even admitted that friends and family might distance themselves because of it. Even his girlfriend at the time, who was around his age and German, decided to leave after hearing about what he's done, despite saying just how great Cosmo was in the past. It's also stated by Cosmo that someone stops being a child in Germany when they turn 14, and that's obviously not true. 14 year old kids can't leave home, get a job, a mortgage, and so on. Just because you're given the right to do something at one age doesn't inherently mean that they aren't still considered underage. It's like being able to drive at 16 in America. I can do that, but I can't leave home unless I get the courts to emancipate me, and that's super rare. The age of consent is also different in America, though Cosmo never directly says in the video that they were American or what their age actually was, instead simply saying they were under 18. Funny how when later in the video he discusses how people are disgusted at all he did, he says he was only a teen. That's right, it was okay for him to be in the relationship because by the supposed standards of his country, children stop being that when they they turn 14, but when he's called out for what he did, he's just a teen, just a baby. He didn't know what he was doing. We all make mistakes. Shut the fuck up, I beg of you. 19 going on 20 is the least teen thing in terms of age. Other than that, he actually tries at one point to say the victim wasn't nearly affected by him sending them Rule 34, as they claimed. His defense was that the victim had an NSFW Twitter account where they shared similar stuff. But as far as I know, they never showed any Shota or Lolly, but instead only made MS Paint sketches for memes. Even if that still isn't good on their part, Cosmo was the adult in the situation and had a head up on them by four years, a fourth of the victim's entire existence. There was nothing stopping him from not sending porn. It would have been easy to not indulge this underage person with what he sent and instead, I don't know, be an adult and say how that's a bad thing to do? Maybe I'm just crazy. He was the one who first started sending completely explicit messages, but no, like Cosmo said, it could be found on any Twitter timeline, so it was fine for him to send it to a minor. But hey, I forgot, just because you send explicit messages to a minor, start dating them, ask for their time tolerance level in regards to porn and you plan to meet up with them after seeing their face, there's no way Cosmo would ever intend on doing anything sexual according to him. Never did I ever have any intentions of having our relationship become sexual. Oh shit, oh man, it looks like he's running out of ways to try and downplay everything that happened and act like the victim wasn't really affected. Uh, uh, you don't really care about the victims. Because realistically, does anyone who calls me these things actually care about the well-being of my ex? Of course not! Great save, Cosmo. How dare these people, talking about what you did, monetize their videos? Have they no shame? Have they no class? It's clear they don't care about the victim. They only care about getting views and money! Well, you know what, Cosmo? Even if they don't care about the victim like you say, so what? They aren't the ones that, if not groomed, emotionally took advantage of, manipulated sim porn to, etc. to the victim. I think you're just mad that you have no room to refute what most people say considering you've admitted to it, so instead you want to try and discredit others by calling into question their own morals when it's been sufficiently proven that yours are way out of whack from the word go. To an extent, as long as the intentions of the people making the call out aren't to harm the victim, it doesn't really matter if you don't agree with their morals and wanting to talk about it. You don't get to be the gatekeeper for those that want to talk about all the fucked up things you've done, and acting like you have any form of authority on that is laughable. That's another thing, Cosmo thinks he's got the whole system laid out on exactly how to pull at people's heartstrings to let him back in. He shows the few people that got minor details wrong, and then he proceeds to say 
it wasn't justified at all. He gives a small example of some of the only people that got anything wrong about them and saying they're in the wrong for covering it in the first place. Nay, not just wrong, witch hunting. Nay, not witch hunting, enacting cancel culture! You think I'm joking with this wording? This is exactly what he says. Spamming the comment sections of videos I spent months of my life working on, sending me death threats, saying I'm a danger to kids and that I can't get back on YouTube, that's cancel culture. People would rather see someone fall than to see them get back on their feet. I mean, it's really simple when you think about it, right? Cosmo spent so much time working on those videos for his channel, and they just got dislike bomb because of something he admitted to doing. Why can't the masses forget? Why must they raise their pitchforks and drive the poor, innocent Cosmo out when he did nothing to deserve it other than the things that he did? I'm sorry, baby. Do you need your fucking bottle? All the implications here are so wild and unsubstantiated. To try and say that you were witch hunted is to say that the hate that you got was not only unjustified but spurred on by blind rage others drummed up. Basically, he's saying he was willing to get hate and be held accountable for his actions, but he didn't want hate like this. This isn't cancel culture, Cosmo. You still have a platform to manipulate your audience using these videos with. You haven't lost everything unjustifiably for nothing. You're not the fucking victim and you know it. I'm not trying to make excuses here or victimize myself. Sorry to break this to you, Cosmo, but saying you're a victim of cancel culture is exactly Exactly that. You want the sympathy your victim is getting for no reason beyond you got sad your work wasn't recognized after what you did. After what you coming back symbolizes. There's only so much you can try and twist a situation for your audience before someone else speaks up, and Nani and I were those big people. It doesn't matter how much you threaten to say you'll sue Daft Pina for defamation for calling you a groomer, and that it's supposedly super easy. Anyone that knows the court process understands that for that claim to come through, you have to prove that Daft Pina believing you're a groomer was not only a case of opinion, but false fact. And considering where he lives and the evidence that was given, you can't do that. You'd also have to prove he was maliciously creating the video for no other purpose than slandering you as a public figure. He also would have had to have done it in a reckless fashion with no evidence. Again, you can't prove this to save your life when you fucking admitted to what you did. Not to mention you've committed multiple crimes even by German law. Let's not even get into just how much it would cost to actually pay for a case like that. Many may not know it, but court cases, especially especially international ones, cost a ton of cash to even get off the ground. And in almost any case, you would be kicked out the door with what you have. Just because you say you can do it in such a smug fashion doesn't mean you can actually do shit from a legal perspective, Cosmo, even if you do want to shill out the cash. You probably don't want to do that, however, because you're not making the money you were back in the day, and you're too busy mentioning over and over how you donated to charity to be an adequate broker for your own funds. Yes, it's good to donate to charity, but the second you make that public and repeat it over and over, it shows you only really did it because you want to look good, not because you actually care. Care. This is Jake Pollard Behavior 101, and you're not fooling anyone. This extends to the audience trying to morally force someone to donate to charity because they talked about something in a video, or just demonetizing it overall, despite the fact that when you do so, YouTube doesn't push out your video to people, and holding back money over someone's head when it's essentially their job makes you seem nitpicky in how they cover the situation. The last bit I'd like to direct you towards before the video comes to a close is that Cosmo has a new Twitter account, and who would have thought, after the video came out, out where he said he just wanted to move on and not talk about it anymore, he's continued to talk about it. Also, remembering in the video he claims to want to be more private, away from his fans, which he isn't doing at all. Could it be that he just likes the attention at this point, and only continues to bring it up now in a vain attempt to boost his waning numbers a little bit higher? Most likely considering all that he's tweeting is easy to point and facepalm at. For example, here's a tweet where he's directly saying he wants to talk with whoever may have been in his DMs that he didn't previously, considering, well, everything that's happened because he made friends with minors, I'd say interacting a ton more with them isn't safe and instead makes others very uncomfortable. This is a tweet where he debates making a new Discord for 18+, and it overwhelmingly got no's for obvious reasons. Can't forget those moments where he continues to try and push the narrative that he was just bullied off the platform. Were you expecting a tweet about people flirting with him in DMs? Me neither. And to cap it all off, we've got a tweet that just says, might as well fully embrace the degeneracy at this point. In the end of this video, I want to make my main point Point abundantly clear. Cosmodor is a lying, manipulative, evidence-excluding, crybaby, sympathy-whoring, downplaying influencer that has committed crimes and admitted to doing so, but he thinks he can get away and act like nothing happened. The reason I say influencer is because once you start getting ad deals, that becomes your job. You influence others, and he's using the influence in the worst way possible. He contradicts his motives constantly, and by continuing to talk about the situation, he's bringing even more stress to the victim and even trying to say how they feel when he knows they 
they were very effective. And he uses the gullibility of his audience to his advantage to try and play the Uno Reverse card and make himself the victim. He'll say anything he needs to to get away with what he's done. And if he was actually sorry about everything, either A, he wouldn't keep coming back every few months to apologize again, or B, actually take a substantial period of time off the internet and actually get better. Better, of course, being not blaming cancel culture and even blaming the 15-year-old you dated wasn't a victim. But regardless, I don't want Cosmo to come back to YouTube as a creator. Do something else with your life, and leave all the people you've hurt with the feeling that they're finally free of your consistent presence. I have no sympathy, empathy, whatever for people like you, Cosmo, and this community will not let you just waltz back in here whenever you like. Go. Away. And to all the people who may have almost been fooled by Cosmo, think for yourselves. Look into situations. Don't take what some say at face value. Try to make the right decision. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Also, I should be turning 17 by the time this video comes up, so yay.